Shalom, and welcome back to Treasures of the Torah. I am Moray Matan, Pastor Matt McEwen, and it is my joy to be with you to bring us another Torah portion and to get the treasures out of it. This week, our Torah portion is Parashat Vayeshev. In this particular Torah portion, Jacob sends his son Joseph on a mission. And I am reminded of when Yeshua sent his apostles out two by two on a mission, and he told them to take no provisions with them, not even a walking stick. And I'm sure that they might have been nervous or had a bit of trepidation being the first time that they were sent out on a mission. They were not just being uh, disciples, Talmudim, they were being shlichim, they were being apostles, sent out ones. And I'm sure they may have had some human carnal nervousness about going out. But we know that they are also reassured by a particular Jewish tradition that we're going to talk about today. In chapter 37 of Genesis and verse 14, we say, or we see that Jacob says to Joseph, now go see whether it is well with your brothers. But he doesn't stop there. He doesn't just send him on a mission to see if everything is all right with his brothers, but rather he says, and bring me back word. So he not only sends him to see if everything is okay, but he has a second mission to bring back a report. Why is this important? Once again, this week we are in the collection of commentaries known as Wellspring of Torah, and today we're looking at a particular comment from Or HaChaim HaKadosh. And it says this, and bring me back word. Jacob knew that his other sons hated Joseph, and he was afraid that they may do him harm. We see this in chapter 37, verse 4, at the beginning of this chapter, where it says they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Jacob knows this. He's picked up on this. So he was afraid that they may do Joseph harm. But he also knew this concept in Judaism, and that is, agents sent out on a mission to perform a good deed will come to no harm. No doubt, this is a concept that was known to the shlichim of Yeshua as they go out on their mission, because he sends them out to do mitzvot, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to heal those that are lame and need to walk again. So they are sent out on a mission, and, and so because they're doing a good deed, we know that no harm will come to them. So he therefore says to Joseph, come, I will send you to them, in verse 13, thus appointing him as an agent to perform a good deed, namely, to do honor to his father by carrying out the latter's command to go and visit his brothers. So. Jacob, using what we know from Torah, he sets his son up for success as far as having no harm come to him from his brothers that are now hating him by appointing him to do a mitzvah. Not only to, uh, to go and, and find a good report, but simply the command to honor your father and mother. He's honoring his father by carrying out this command and going and visiting his brothers. But what's interesting is, it says here in this comment, then it occurred to Jacob that Joseph would be in danger on his return journey, for it was then that his mission would have been completed. According to one view, agents sent out on a mission to perform a good deed will come to no harm only in their going forth, but not in their return. So another view of this tradition is that, yes, if you go out to perform a good deed and you're sent out on this mission, on your way going, you won't come to any harm, but it's, there's a chance that coming back, some harm may befall you. And so Jacob, being very wise, does this. Jacob therefore explicitly commanded Joseph to bring me back word so that his return journey would be part of the errand on which his father sent him. I think this is absolutely brilliant and, and wonderful. This way that Jacob is using this errand as a way to ensure the protection of his son Joseph. 
You see, the errand wasn't just to go see if it is well with his brothers, but in making part of the errand to bring back word, it ensures his safety on his return trip as well. I think this is wonderful. This idea of he's honoring his father in the coming back as well. We don't need to worry if we are being sent out on a mission by Hashem. We have his protection that goes with us. We are going out on a mission to do a mitzvah. We could call it a mitzvah mission. I remember the television show and the movies that came out that were called Mission Impossible. And they always began like this. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, and then it would tell the mission. We need to not only hear the mission that Hashem has for us, we need to accept the mission that He has for us. Because after all, we are sent out ones. We are shlichim in that way. We are apostles. We're ones sent out on a mission. And why can I say that with such surety? Well, it's because of what we call the Great Commission. We are told to go, or rather, as we are going, and to make Talmudim, to make disciples of all nations. This is our mission. And as we are going out and coming back in, we are like the 12 apostles that went out two by two. But also, we are like the 70 that were sent out two by two. And let us be reminded, the 12 representing Israel, and the 70, the number 70 always represents the nations, the Gentiles. So you can see how the gospel goes out, the good news goes out first to the Jew. Those 12 were told to only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not to Gentiles. But the same stipulation was not given to the 70. So we see the mission going out first to the Jew and also to the Gentile. We have a mission that we must accept and that we must fulfill. And we have the assurance that we are going to be all right along the way, whether it's in our going or in our coming. Just as the children of Israel were, were surrounded by the protection of the Lord in the wilderness, so too we are the ones who God goes before, He goes behind, He is all around us. He is giving us that protection on our mission. So we can go with confidence. And it's my prayer that you do just that. That you go out on the mission with confidence, knowing that our Heavenly Father has our safety and our best interests at heart. I pray that this has been a blessing to you this week. I do want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. If you want to study where I do and where I also teach, you can go to Yeshivat Shuvu by going to shuvu.tv filling out an application, and you can go to the same school where I go to. It has been a tremendous blessing in my life. I can promise you, you will never be the same. Shabbat Shalom, my brothers and sisters, and I pray that the Lord would give you His protection as you come and as you go.